Uh, can you teach the writing of fiction? Well, undoubtedly you can, because people do it. And you can even become a professor of creative writing. I have a chair in creative writing. And you can get, um, uh, you know, get places to get a PhD in creative writing, I have no doubt. But uh, I wonder what they're teaching. They're, te they're teaching the, what must be the, the things you can talk about, the aspects of the craft that you can take out and examine and they sort of abstract and then put together again. Um, and uh, they're not always the most interesting or the most important aspects of it, I don't think. I, I'm always interested in courses of creative writing, but I regard them with a certain degree of faint suspicion. I'm actually associated with one. Oxford Brookes University do a course of creative writing, and I'm one of the listed as one of the external lecturers or something. So I go in every year and give them a talk on this or that. But um, I think it's some well. Now, that's a very good question, because you know, you've made me think, what would I do now if I were a young, aspiring writer? Um, I'd probably try and get a place on a course of cre for creative writing, and I'd probably get a place, and I'd uh, probably do it and enjoy it. But those, those things didn't exist 45 years ago, when I was young. Uh, there were nowhere where you could go and learn creative writing or get a degree or a qualification in it or, or whatever. So I had to learn from myself. And I suspect that's not a bad way of doing it, because you're on your own with the books that you've read and the um, influences you've um, gathered and that you're conscious of from a variety of uh, things, not only books, but films, of course, and stage plays and comics and oral storytelling. And you learn what you can do as you're alone in the room with your pen and your paper um, or your computer. But with the tools of your trade, you learn what you you, you 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 learn the most important things when you're alone, and I don't think they can be talked about. Not really. That's uh, another very interesting question. Uh, I, I remember when I was writing my first novel. About, about halfway through, I picked up a uh, one of Hemingway's volume of Hemingway short stories, and I read several of those short stories, and my style changed overnight. Suddenly I was writing like Hemingway. And I thought, hang on, I'd better be careful here because I'll absorb the imprint of whoever I've just read. Uh, and maybe I ought to step back a bit and find out what I can do. Um, I didn't begin to think about storytelling in that way until rather later. Um, I was most conscious, to begin with, of techniques, of the techniques of poetry. Uh, I wrote a great deal of poetry when I was young. Um, uh, sonnets and iambic pentameters and heroic couplets and all sorts of complicated verse forms. I loved all that sort of stuff. And I did a great deal of it. And what it taught me about storytelling is precisely nil, I suspect, but it did give me the sense of working with language as a, as a um, well, that's your raw material. That's the material you make things out of. And how do you put words together in a way that sounds good and feels good, feels good in the mouth as you say it? Uh, what, what are the secrets of rhythm? It's not just regular metre, de dun de dun de dun de dun de dun There are other, there's, there's a sort of springiness in it. And that gave me, I think, a feeling for the, uh, the bones and the flesh of the language. That's the te techniques that I was conscious of when I was younger. Later, after I'd written, half a dozen novels, I began to see what the, the, the began to see that storytelling too had things I hadn't noticed, but I'd, I'd sort of done almost without thinking about. And then I realised why they were important. If you have a new scene in a story, for example, something's got to have changed at the end of that scene or else the reader will feel bored in there. Um, you know, it's the same in a film. Um, if you have a scene in which two people are discussing their future over a cup of coffee and at the end of the scene nothing's been resolved, nothing's happened, it'll feel kind of redundant. Something's got to happen in the scene to make it feel part of the story and connected with the impetus of the whole thing. Uh, well, uh, Hemingway's usually the, the guy to go for, the, to go to for suspense, and he pointed out that if you shoot a scene there were four men sitting around playing cards around a table. 
um, and put it in two different films. In one film, it's deadly dull, it's boring, people are looking at their watches. In the other, they're sitting at the edge of their chairs, they can't, the sweat's rolling down their faces because that second audience knows what the men don't know, which is there's a bomb under the table. Tell the audience something that the characters in the, in, the, in, the, in the story don't know and they will be longing for them to find out. They will read on and turn the pages uh, in order to see it happening. Or two people who we want to see falling in love and, they, they're, they're, and we, we know they're made for each other and we know they've got to get together and we're just waiting for the moment when Elizabeth and, you know, Darcy, that sort of thing. Um, it's, it's the audience anticipating something or knowing something that the people in the story don't.